One question you might have is, which knife is the best knife for the task at hand? So if you're going to cut something light, like paper or illustration board, this is probably a good choice. These are exchangeable blades, so you're always going to have a sharp one if you change it. One challenge with using this kind of blade is you don't notice that it's getting dull if you use the same blade for a while. So um, it's better to just, as soon as you think it's getting dull, just change it rather than keep cutting while the blade gets more and more dull. You're more likely to hurt yourself with a dull blade, obviously, because you're applying more force to make the cut happen. Some knives um, are not appropriate for some tasks, but any knife can be made really sharp. This is a jackknife, and it'll cut a piece of paper just as well as an exacto knife, but it wouldn't be the choice you would use for cutting a board because of how thick the blade is. So there is a difference between which type of knife you would use for which purpose. I'd like to make one thing pretty clear about cutting with a knife, and that is if you cut yourself, you did it. That sounds very obvious, but you need to be aware that you're the one responsible for where your hands are and for planning the cut. So remember that you're the one with the knife in your hand, and if you do something with the knife that's going to hurt you, it was your own fault. I guess it makes sense to never have a helper hold the blade for you because then you could hurt them. So this is a one-person operation. You're the one holding the ruler and the knife. It probably also goes without saying that you should never cut when you're tired or distracted um, and you need to not be talking to somebody else while you're cutting. Your attention needs to be on exactly where that sharp object is. And if you're tired or distracted or in a hurry, then you're much more likely to hurt yourself than if you remain calm and kind of very deliberately work. So pay attention to your surroundings and make sure that you're not the cause of hurting your own self. Let's talk about cutting different materials and the surface that you're cutting on. Something thicker like cardboard, you definitely want to make more than one pass through. And with cardboard, I would normally choose to use a utility knife. The first cut, you should just cut the top layer of paper. In the next cut, try and cut the corrugations. And then the last pass, you can probably cut all the way through. Now, obviously, I can cut this in one pass with more force, but you're more likely to rip the cardboard and hurt yourself. It is possible to cut all at once. You can probably tell also, though, that the edge can get crunched and the angle of the knife is less surely controlled. So a thicker material like cardboard Think about doing it in three passes. Cardboard also has a grain. If you change the direction of the cardboard, it cuts completely differently. The surface you cut on is very important in how long the blade stays sharp. We use these cutting mats because it helps to prevent the blade tip from getting dull right away. If you cut right on this hardboard surface, you're not going to get yelled at because this is a expendable surface covering up the top of the table. But it will make the tip of the blade get dull much quicker than the cutting mat. So it's probably a good idea to use a cutting mat when you can. Artists and designers use foam core quite a lot. This old piece of foam core is kind of dented, but you can see that it consists of a layer of paper on each side and foam in the middle. In when you go to cut foam core, you should just change the blade right away before you even start. When you use a dull blade on foam core, it causes the foam on the inside to tear and rip. 
if I slice through the first layer of paper and break it, um, you can see that the edge is not smooth. So in cutting foam core, you actually have to cut through each layer. And again, I would recommend using three passes to do this. It doesn't matter which knife you use, it still takes three passes to cut foam core cleanly. So I'll cut it this way. First pass is to cut the paper. Next pass is to cut the foam. And third pass is to cut the other layer. When you're cutting, you can tell how sharp the blade is by the sound that it makes. And that's pretty clean. I'll put an old blade back into the knife so you can see what it looks like when the blade is dull. So this knife has a really dull blade. It's been used to open boxes of clay probably. And you'll hear how dull it is as I cut. It barely cuts through the paper. And now I'm cutting the foam. You can hear the foam catching in the cut. And you can see how rough the foam layer has been torn. So a sharp blade is essential cutting foam core. The X-Acto knife works the same way. Good. Even if you have a knife with a sharp new blade, if you try and cut all the way through in one pass using more force, it's much more likely for the blade to wander off the track that you intend. When you score the paper and then cut the next layer through, the paper you scored is helping to jig the next cut so it goes straight. So it's best to avoid trying to cut all in one shot because it is much more difficult to steer the blade straight. It's through, but it's not necessarily under control. Under control would look like this. It doesn't really take very long to make three passes and the results are better. It's possible to cut a straight line without even using a ruler. I'm going to draw a line with a marker so it's easier for you to see, but obviously you would use a pencil to do this. If I cut with the blade at a low angle, it's fairly easy to like, follow the line that I've drawn. I think it's important that you understand as well that you don't want to look at the blade itself. You actually want to look a little ahead of where you're cutting so that you can make the line go straight. So I'll set the knife on the line and just pull through so I'm cutting the paper. And with that first cut established, the next one's a lot easier. Again, if I pushed hard, I would probably waver, but since I'm pressing lightly, it's under control. And I think the easiest way to see how straight the line is is by putting the ruler back on the cut. It's pretty straight. Good enough for a lot of things. I need to take just a little bit off this edge. It seems logical that you shouldn't put the ruler here because it's not supported by the material that you're cutting. So logically, you would go like this. If you ever do have a very narrow piece to cut, you can use another piece of the same material to help to support the ruler. The ruler needs to be flat on top of whatever you're cutting. Another material you might come across is balsa wood. Balsa wood is just a very lightweight wood. Um, it's fairly easy to cut with a knife as well. And it cuts a lot like foam core. You don't want to try and, although I can cut this in one pass, you don't really want to do that because you're more likely to crunch the material like I did at the beginning of the cut or have something like that happen. Balsa wood also has grain, so when you cut with the grain, it cuts differently than across the grain. The same idea would be used. 
score the material, try and cut part way through, and then finish the cut. There's actually some grain right here that didn't go through. I can feel it. Now it's cut cleanly. So even though that's a thin material, you probably should cut it with several passes. Obviously, when you're done cutting, you should cover the blades or retract them. That's the only way the knife is safe to travel or to put back into a box somewhere. So when you reach into your toolbox, you don't stab yourself. Um, if you ever need to hand a knife to somebody else, clearly this would be the best way to do it. If you cover the blade and then pass it along. Or if you have a knife like this, don't ever hand the knife to somebody, even this way. The best way to give a knife to somebody else is to put it down on the table and let them pick it up.